Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! There was a mixture of approval and mockery this week when the Corbyn supporting campaign group Momentum announced that it was setting up an activity group for children. Called Momentum Kids, it's intended to provide childcare for parents who want to get involved in political activism. Some thought this was entirely sensible, but others weren't exactly keen on the idea that it might involve politicising children. Lib Dem leader Tim Farron dubbed the group Tiny Trots. I suppose it was calling out for that. And the scheme may not have been helped by an advert for an event at this weekend's Labour conference featuring a teddy bear mandate session. Children were invited to bring their favourite toy. Imagine what party it might join. Think about what their teddy stands for, its values and how it might make positive changes. So is this revolutionary brainwashing or an entirely harmless way to get more people involved in politics? Well, I'm joined now by the children's author, Michael Rosen, and by Laura Perrins from the website Conservative Women. Welcome to both of you. Michael Rosen, is it ideological brainwashing? No, it's exactly what the government recommends. <laughs> uh, if you look closely at uh, the British Values site that mm. the government says, it says that in schools people should... Um, encourage children to demonstrate how democracy works. It's actually, those are its exact words. Demonstrate how democracy works. That's what all schools should be doing. Right, well, what's wrong with that, Laura? Well, I think this is a, another great example of how the left, like, it's a, it's a rather sinister example of sort of grooming and, and infiltrating a very young ch child's mind onto a, a very leftist agenda. Um, and, you know, we've always, th there are plenty of examples of that. If it was just providing childcare, of course, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. But the idea that we're sort of empowering children and very young toddlers and children to hold up placards is going a little, a little bit too far, I think. Didn't it just say, didn't the bit that you just read out say so that they had to choose which party? Yes, I mean, if it was a right-wing organisation, grassroots organisation, perhaps one like your own, what would be wrong with providing childcare and perhaps talking about politics? Well, I think you have to be very careful in terms of not trying to go behind parents parents' backs and sort of, as I said, influencing the minds of very, very young children um, what, what, into... What it, into Are the parents just, not going just, along? Just a moment. Well, no, the, the parents won't be there because they'll be politicking uh, with momentum. This, this, the children, we assume, are separated in the creche. While they are out protesting. I mean, the thing is, Michael Rosen, why is it necessary to have it with a political backdrop? I mean, if families want to talk politics at home or take their kids out on protests and carry placards, why don't they do that? Why does there have to be a sort of political... There doesn't reason have to, to be offer childcare as a carrot and then say we will in some ways uh, indoctrinate your children. There, there, there doesn't have to be at all. It's this is what people choose to do. I belong to left-wing groups. When I was a child, you know, I'm utterly indoctrinated. I'm some. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you obviously went to person. one of these when you were very young. I and, did and from the stuck. onwards, and I was no good at making placards. Well, it shows so how effective I'd have they are, doesn't it? I'd love to have done that so I could learn how to make better placards. But the car carrot is the free childcare. So I mean, it's well, quite clever. You could argue, actually, it's a clever idea for a political party to offer free childcare, and you recruit new people, not people who are already indoctrinated well, like yourself, well, but, but other families. Yeah, no, I feel very indoctrinated. Thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, but you could say, as always, people do that. I mean, you can uh, t tell children things and you can show children things and you can get them to uh, demonstrate how democracy works, which is, as I say, what the government recommends. And, of course, some children walk away because they're bored stiff. Right. So whatever they do, it's going to have to be fun, isn't it? Because they're not at school. There's no punishment. It's a wee bit... Fun indoctrination. It's always fun indoctrination. Laura, what's the difference, though, bit, uh, between sitting right. though, at the dinner table with your families who are discussing uh, left or right-wing mm. politics, putting the same newspapers in front of you on a daily basis? I know it would be on iPads mm. now. But you're being indoctrinated from a very early age well, by the family. With what would be wrong with extending that slightly into into some well, form of childcare? Well, that's if you think parents and and politicians are exactly the same, which of course they're, they're well, not. not. I mean, having just I heard them on, I heard them on the news program. Let's, 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 let's let me finish, Michael. Okay, you know, other people have a view. Of course, political discussion around the dinner table should be encouraged, mm. and, and, and I do it at home um, a, a lot. But that's very different to separating um, children, as I said, very young children, we're talking five and six, from their parents, putting them sort of in a room and, and setting about this, uh, as I said, what is essentially indoctrination. And it just shows how extreme 
same momentum are. Would the SNP do it? It, it strikes me as a little bit earnest. I'm sitting here listening to this uh, Teddy business, and it's, it's a bit like Chairman Mao goes to Brighthead, isn't it? Uh, Sounds I mean, like the subject of a new series. Exactly. Uh, Jeremy, Cor series. Jeremy Corbyn joins the Poustics uh, Society. I, I'm not sure. I read the website. It wasn't exactly um, brimming with uh, with, well, with fun. And I say, if the children don't like it, they'll walk away. Well, you know, well, I'm well, somebody who tries to entertain children nearly every day of the week. Well, I don't think that will pass health and safety. In children's books. I mean, lots of children's books have moral messaging in them too, I don't they? I brought one along. And it's called Yertle the Turtle by Dr Zeus. Let's celebrate 25 years since the great Dr Zeus. Well, yeah, right there, to there that. And what's a, the message? The message is that if you're poor and uh, oppressed, you should fight back. Right. That's Do you read those books to your kids? No, I have read, Michael, of most of your... Watchers will know Red were, or wrote We're Going on a Bear Hunt, which is a huge favourite. And I'm rather disturbed to think about uh, this book being used to indoctrinate children. I used to, I read it, it to my kids all the time. See, we would, but we this, would vote, this, we'd this vote against the hunting element the end, of that. You see every, all, all the family are underneath the duvet, and this is what the ordinary par but, Labour Party members will be on Saturday. Are you not reading something Corbyn, sinister into everything when, here? When <laughs> Corbyn is elected, that, that's where Middle Britain is, hiding under, under the covers. We're not going over it, we're not going over it, we've got to go through right. it. And sharing, what a message. sharing a bed as well. Well, with, with a dog. an animal. I feel, I feel like this is a sort of Jack and Nori session. Uh, what's That's your what favourite Andrew's children's fallen asleep. Book? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favourite children's is the Harvard Business Review. Oh. Uh, I've been getting away with it all my